Hello everyone, welcome to the module five, lecture one, that is rapidly varied flow. So in this lecture, uh, our learning objectives are to understand the characteristics of a rapidly varied flow. We'll also understand what is hydraulic jump and its formation. And we'll discuss the types of hydraulic jump and its classification. So with the previous background of uh, gradually varied flow, where we saw that the flow, uh, the changes in the flow characteristics like depth, discharge, velocity with respect to space is gradual. But in this case, the flow characteristics change over a short length and thus it is called a rapidly varied flow. So essentially in a rapidly varied flow, if you look at its pronounced characteristics, the curvature of the flow will be very pronounced and the pre pressure distribution thus no longer remains hydrostatic. So that basic violation in GVF that the pressure distribution is hydrostatic is violated in case of RVF. Uh, the rapid variation in flow regime takes place because uh, the change happens in a relatively short range. Thus, the role of boundary friction is insignificant in case of RVF and the uh, ma major energy loss uh, is due to the eddies or the turbulence which is created in case of RVF. Uh, now, uh, when RVF occurs in case of a sudden transition structure, so that can be a sudden change in the geometric properties or due to some other obstruction, the characteristics of flow are basically fixed by the boundary of structure as well as the state of flow. So whether the flow is uh, su su subcritical or whether it is supercritical uh, flow, so that also determines the characteristics of flow. And also, since the rapid changes in the water surface happens, the velocity distribution coefficients, that is alpha and beta, are definitely greater than unity because for uniform uniform flow, we consider them equal to one. But uh, for RVF, they are much greater as compared to what we can uh, actually calculate for the GVF as well. So a very good example of RVF is called hydraulic jump. So in case of specific energy also we had some mention about hydraulic jump in GVF profiles also we saw that if there is a transition from um, if, if there is a flow beneath a sluice gate then a hydraulic jump is forming then if there is a transition in a channel slope uh, from uh, steep to mild, then also uh, a hydraulic jump can be formed. So uh, they, they are uh, some sort of um, situations where a hydraulic jump can occur. So what is an essential criteria? The essential criteria is that the flow should have passed the critical stage. That means it has to be a supercritical. So when a supercritical stream meets a subcritical stream of sufficient depth, a hydraulic jump occurs. So if you don't achieve that subcritical steam, your flow will continue to be supercritical and hydraulic jump won't occur. So there is a necessary condition that the supercritical stream should meet a subcritical stream of sufficient depth. Now, what is the depth we'll see in uh, coming, uh, uh, coming time? Now, the supercritical uh, stream jumps to meet its alternate depth. So for a given specific energy, there are two depths. So they're called alternate depths. So due to that, it generates large scale eddies and a reverse roller kind of arrangement is uh, seen. So if you carefully notice this figure, so in this figure, the this is the subcritical, uh, supercritical stream Y1 and uh, this meets another subcritical stream Y2. So be between them, a hydraulic jump occurs and there are large scale eddies which are generated and a reverse rollers are formed. So these are the reverse rollers which are formed. And due to this, the jump falls short of its alternate depth. So Y2 depth is not alternate to Y1 because there is some energy loss which is taking place. So there is a new depth which is uh, less than the alternate depth. So when these rollers occur, uh, there is a lot of air entrainment. So you will see a lot of this bubble formation and the surface becomes very white and frothy kind of surface. So if you look the experimental figure of a hydraulic jump, so you can see. So you can see very clearly that uh, this is the point 
where you have a supercritical stream that is meeting to a subcritical stream. So this is the hydraulic jump which is formed and the surface is very full of air bubbles and there is froth being produced and it is very choppy. So this is the same simulation of that hydraulic jump done through some software and where the velocity can also be visualized. So you can see that here the velocity is very high around 2.5 meters per second and then this blue portion shows a lesser velocity. So it is very close uh, the, where the subcritical forms, uh, the velocity is very less. And here in the lower layers, you can see the velocity is still high compared to those in upper layers because here a lot of air entrainment is there, reverse rollers are there. So some flow reversal also takes place. So this image is uh, taken from this paper. So you can refer this paper for this uh, wonderful image. So the initial depth which is there that is y1 that is your supercritical depth and the final depth is y2 which is after the jump is formed that is a subcritical depth now the y2 in this case is smaller than the depth which is alternate to y1 so if you have a depth which is alternate to y1 we may call it as y2 dash your y2 is less than y2 dash and that particular depth y2 which is relative to y1 are called conjugate or sequent depths so uh, again recalling the specific force concept so two uh, the depths having the same specific force are called the sequent or conjugate depths so a hydraulic jump will only be formed if your two depths y1 and y2 are conjugate to either each other otherwise the hydraulic jump won't be formed now, due to a higher turbulence and shear there is a, of the roller, uh, there is considerable energy loss. So your energy equation cannot totally determine the study of the hydraulic jump and thus we have to use momentum equation additionally with some uh, assumptions to analyze the hydraulic jump phenomena. Okay, now what are the some uses of hydraulic jump? So the uses of hydraulic jump are that it is Primarily used as an energy dissipator to dissipate excess energy of the flowing water. So it is uh, usually observed below the spillway or sluice gates in canals. Uh, then uh, it is also used for efficient operation of flow measurement flumes. Uh, then it is used for mixing chemicals. So if two chemicals have different densities, they are not easily mixed. So by creation of hydraulic jump, it is mixed. So the chemical engineers also use this phenomena. It is also used in mixing and gas transfer in chemical processes. Uh, also, where you want to desalinate the seawater, there also the application of hydraulic jump is there. And it is uh, also used to aerate the streams which are very much polluted. So, by create, so if you have a background of the environmental engineering where we have this dissolved oxygen, BOD, COD terms are used. So, stream with poor water quality will have low DO value. So to increase the DO value, one of the very good measure is uh, we give air entrainment. So the hydraulic jump, so aeration is a process. So hydraulic jump provides sufficient aeration so that the uh, DO levels would increase. So that kind of arrangement can be made. Okay, now where we can observe uh, a supercritical stream. So we have some of practical cases where you can see the very first one is uh, the flow below a spillway so you can see the water is coming down the spillway and this jump takes place so here much of the energy is dissipated so this is the case where you find a, a supercritical stream here this is a supercritical stream and then hydraulic jump takes place then next is the flow under a sluice gate so this is a sluice gate so as you raise the sluice gate, the water will gush through the sluice gate and this is a super critical stream and then it will undergo a hydraulic jump and meet the subcritical stream. So again, you can find a super critical stream below a sluice gate. Then uh, there is a case of flow below a weir. So uh, this is a weir. You can have a broad crested weir or any weir. In this case, a labyrinth weir is shown. And when the here the depth is critical and when the flow moves here so downstream of that weir you have a supercritical stream and then a hydraulic jump takes place next is when a steep slope channel meets a horizontal or mild slope channel in that case also you can see that uh, h3 profile and then hydraulic jump is being formed so 
where there is a transition of slope there also uh, supercritical flow exists and the hydraulic jump may be formed so with this background let us understand the types of hydraulic jump so what are the types of hydraulic jump so there are basic three types of hydraulic jump the very first one uh, that is jump at vena contractor so in this we are uh, analyzing a case where flow is happening below a sluice gate same cases can also happen where uh, the flow is below the spillway so in case of sluice gate uh, as the water moves out of the sluice gate there comes a point where the cross section area of flow is minimum and that particular point is called a vena contracta so you have a depth of flow y1 at vena contracta and the subcritical depth downstream that is y2 so if y1 is conjugate to y2 so the downstream depth is also designated as tail water depth so the tail water depth that is equal to the conjugate depth corresponding to depth at vena contracta then your jump forms at vena contracta itself so the velocity distribution is shown in this case now there can be two cases that is your tail water depth can be less than y2 or greater than y2 so two cases are possible first case is equal to y2 and second it can be less than y2 so analyzing that second case where your tail water depth is less than y2 so that new de depth is y2 dash so the if it is less than y2 then the jump is rippled down through m3 curve so this is the point where vena contracta is so it will go ahead such that you find a conjugate depth to y2 dash so that conjugate depth you get further downstream from the vena contractor and that is y1 dash so the jump will be formed between these two depths that is y1 dash and y2 dash and before the jump formation there will be a gvf profile which is called uh, the m3 curve if it is a mild slope channel if it is a horizontal slope channel it will be h3 okay so what will the length of uh, m3 curve it will be ranging from the depths y1 to y1 dash between this what is the horizontal distance being covered that is the length of the m3 profile now why we require to determine the i mean uh, contain the jump at vena contracta only because if uh, the m let us say the m3 curve is of 50 meter in length so that means till 50 meter downstream of the sluice gate your energy is not dissipated till the hydraulic jump is formed and you need to provide a stilling basin of concrete of 50 meter length so that is not an economical proposition so to overcome that we always prefer that the energy should dissipate at the vena contract of sluice gate or the foot of the spillway so that from the economical considerations your energy dissipation can be achieved at that particular point and the cost can be saved so that is why the jump at vena contracta or the toe of spillway is much preferred now in these two cases where uh, that is the jump at vena contract and ripple jump the depths y2 and y2 dash are such that the flow through the sluice gate is not affected anymore so these kind of uh, jumps are called free jumps where the flow is not affected in the third case if you see that the depth tail water depth y2 dash double dash is greater than y2 so your jump that is submerged it is no longer free but it gets drowned or submerged here so such a jump is called a drowned or uh, submerged jump and its energy dissipation is very less compared to the free jump so that kind of jump is not at all useful now uh, based on the fraud number of entering flow uh, there are five categories of classification of hydraulic jump in a horizontal rectangular channel so the classification of hydraulic jump if we see so if your fraud number is less than one so that means there is no jump possible because your flow will be subcritical flow so subcritical flow is not a prerequisite condition for hydraulic jump to occur so your flow should be supercritical that means your fraud number should be greater than one so if the fraud number is greater than one that is between one to 1.7 and uh, the depth ratio that is sequent depth ratio is one between one to two so your energy dissipation is less than five percent and such a jump is called a undular jump so in the undular jump if you look at the surface the surface is very undulating 
and there is very small surface rollers are being developed so surface profile appears this way now if you slightly increase the froud number that is the flow becomes more stronger that is the supercritical flow becomes more stronger so the range is 1.7 to 2.5 where the energy dissipation is up to 15 percent and the flow you can see it is slowly climbing smoothly there are rollers being formed and it is slowly climbing but still they are very small rollers such a jump is called a weak jump now if you further uh, go on increasing the uh, fraud number that is the flow strength is being increased so you can see that the energy dissipation is between 15 to 45 percent for a fraud number between 2.5 to 4.5 mind you this is the fraud number of the entering stream so you can see lot of oscillation of jets being seen and uh, these oscillations make so much uh, waves uh, there is a wavy surface and this can also damage the earthen banks and uh, stilling basins also so this kind of uh, jump should be avoided so you can see lot of wavy surface being formed here and uh, if you further increase the fraud number then it to 4.5 to 9 the energy dissipation is up to 70 percent can be achieved now this jump is much balanced and it is not sensitive to the downstream condition as well so you can have a high intense eddy motion and the energy dissipation is very uh, high and if the fraud number is greater than 9 then you have up to 85 percent of energy dissipation and the flow is very rough uh, and uh, very effective uh, energy dissipation is observed but it can be uneconomical compared to other designs because you may require a lot of uh, you know high uh, uh, downward that is downstream stage and all that considerations are there so it is called a strong jump so based on fraud number these are the hydraulic jump classifications which are possible so that's all for today's uh, lecture in the next lecture we'll analyze the hydraulic jump its characteristics and how it can be used as an energy dissipator in a real world problem okay so thank you everyone have a nice day